Today, I'm gonna to attempt three new exercises I've never done before. What we're gonna go through is uh, two leg exercises and one pull-up exercise. I'm gonna go through these exercises never having knowledge, only visually seeing it on YouTube and Instagram. So I'm gonna tell you uh, what the exercise feels like, should you do it, and what are the disadvantages to these exercises. All right, first up, let's go to the alternating grip pull-up. So basically, I'm gonna pull myself up as fast as I can, and in mid-air, I'm gonna change grip into a chin-up grip. And then I'm gonna pull myself back up and change grip into a pull-up grip. Okay, let's give that a go. This is the pull-up bar I'm going to be using and this is the first time me doing the pull-up alternating grips. Okay, oh, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to start off with the pull-up grip. <laughs> All right, so How was that, that was not as hard as I thought yeah. because you think that in midair switching would be the most difficult part. The most difficult part is actually catching the bar and slowing yourself down, so the eccentric phase. Um, but I can see it as a really useful exercise if you're into plyometrics, uh, gymnast type exercises like calisthenics. But for the average Joe, I think we're going to struggle catching yourself and lowering yourself slowly. So a lot of pressure on the hands. Um, yeah, would I keep this exercise in my repertoire? Yeah, just for fun, but not a long-term thing. Yeah. Um, and I think to do this exercise, if you were to attempt it, you would have to have some significant experience in pull-ups and chin-ups and especially strength in that area. So I think the prerequisites for this one is gonna be at least some uh, body weight pull-ups at about 10 reps, or even some weighted ones, if you can. The next exercise I'm gonna do is the kneeling squat. So basically I'm gonna have the bar set at a lower height where I'm kneeling, and I'm just gonna do a half motion like this, bar my back, and just kneeling back and down. I think this would, be, this would be a good exercise for learning how to hip hinge, but also focusing on the glutes. Oh, wrong way. I'm setting up my safety bars. Yeah, see how it's around shoulder height? Perfect. Right, we can go chuck the bar on. Okay, I'm gonna attempt the exercise without any weight and see what it feels like. Okay. Doesn't really feel like anything at the moment, but I can faintly feel the glutes and a little bit of a stretch in the quads. Let's load it up and see how it feels when it's a significantly heavier weight. Yeah, definitely felt the glutes, the glute max predominantly. Uh, not so much the quads, surprisingly, but definitely focus on the glutes, the hip hinge. This is a really good exercise if you want to learn how to hip hinge. Uh, only drawback is when you first get under the weight, there's a bit of pressure on the lower back, but maybe we can set these uh, J hooks a bit uh, to the level where your upper back is. So a little bit of tinkering around, but really good exercise for the glutes. You might put some pads on the ground if you have knee issues. But yeah, really cool exercise. Would I keep it in my repertoire? 
Um, probably not. I think there's better glute exercises, but for beginners that are learning how to hip hinge, perfect. And for people who really want to feel your glutes work in the next size, that's a great one if you don't have a hip thrust. Personally, for me, I don't want a big. I don't want to build a big butt. So I just had Rachel do a set herself. Um, how did you find the exercise? I thought it was pretty good. Yep. Um, definitely, yeah, didn't feel it in the quads, but I can definitely feel it in the booty. So I think what you said before with people learning how to hip hinge, I, a lot of my clients kind of struggle with that movement, especially if they haven't done much movement before. So I think I might actually add that in for people that are probably new to lifting, just so they can practice feeling the glutes, activating the glutes, because a lot of them don't tend to do that when it comes to like a squat or that type of movement. So yeah, I think it's a really good exercise and I would probably keep it in there and give it to my clients as well, so. Final exercise, I'm gonna do the landmine hack squat. If you don't have a hack squat at your gym and you only have a barbell and possibly a landmine connection, you might not even need one, you just need a corner, but we've got a landmine connection, uh, you can set up a hack squat. Just bring it up. Okay. Oh. Interesting. Let me put your feet out a bit more. That's it. That's better. It does feel good. Uh, you definitely get a lot of range of motion in the legs. It's like something that you can really work your legs hard. So I'm like kind of out of breath. I'm more out of breath by just setting it up. So <laughs> the drawback is if you're going to use a significant amount of weight, it's going to take a two person job to chuck it on your shoulders. Mm. Another drawback is uh, the weight on your shoulders you might find that it's going to dig into your traps, maybe a bit of um, sh shoulders as well. And it's a bit lopsided, so you probably have to do both sides. Uh, but I did feel uh, the legs work really hard, full range of motion. Will I keep this one? I think I'll use it with a light weight because it doesn't seem like you need much weight for this, uh, especially when you're going all the way down. Uh, Let's try a lighter weight and see how it feels. Okay, let's try this with a lighter weight. Putting all my body weight back. Keep the bar a bit more on your traps so you have more cushioning. Okay, and I reckon this is really, be really good for partials. Oh, that's a very nice. <laughs> that feels like a really good hack spot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good exercise, I think. Um, it's just the inconvenience of putting it up onto your shoulders and you might have some complaints on the pressure on your shoulders. But overall, there's not much weight there. Could really feel the muscles work uh, more effectively than say a conventional squat would. But the beauty of a squat is you can load it up. This one would be a really good finisher if you don't have a hack squat. Those are three new exercises I've never tried before. Um, they're all very interesting. I'm looking forward to finding more new exercises to try out and some might actually stay in my routine but today I would only use this one yeah this is a good one um, the landmine hack squat 
I'll probably keep this one in my repertoire for a nice little pump after a five by five set, like a strength set. And then you just want to back off and finish off um, with the burner. Okay, that's it.